This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Welcome in, my friends, to another episode of Behind the Pen. My name is Mike Rankin, and I'll be your host today. I appreciate you checking in. I will be by myself, but that's okay because there is so much to talk about. And I'm, one, excited that the NFL draft is over with because there was so much speculation going on that, like, my brain hurt and all this, all these moving parts, like, with trades and picks going every which way and players falling off the board and all this other stuff. So I'm going to get into that. I have a lot to talk about today, as I just mentioned. We have draft reaction to go through, especially in the first round, which I'm going to focus on first because, damn, a lot of stuff went down there. Also... I got I, I to gotta break down this Bears draft. And before I even get into that, <laughs> I'm pretty darn happy with everything that went down there. And then also, April's over, guys. The MLB season's a month in, and I'm going to just talk about stuff that happened when I, around the league and important things that I have to mention, like, oh, I don't know, the Chicago Cubs being the best team in baseball at this point, having the best record. So, yeah, I'm going to get into a lot of that in the MLB, NFL, Mainly those two for today. Usually I, I have a little bit more to talk about, but there's so much so much going on in both NFL and MLB that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna focus this show on those two for today. All right, let's let's get into this draft stuff because boy, a lot of unexpected occurrences went down. So first let's let's break down the first few picks, right? So Going in, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that Jared Goff and Carson Wentz were going to go 1-2. And then it got interesting once it got to 3 in the Chargers because one, Laramie Tunsil, who I will mention in a little bit, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you are familiar with with what went down with him. So, all right, Joey Bosa goes 3 to the Chargers. Now, Bosa was ranked as one of the most disruptive pass rushers in all of the draft. He may be even the most talented defensive player in the draft. That's that's debatable. But overall, it was kind of a wild card pick by the Chargers. I mean, a lot of people were projecting them to go in another direction. But Bosa goes 3. And then the Cowboys have a chance to take the best player in this draft I would go out go as far as to say that Jalen Ramsey is the best player available in this or was and they decided to take Ezekiel Elliott running back Ohio State and Elliott first it's not very common for running backs to go in the first round even and this guy went four and now the now in the Cowboys situation without Tony Romo they weren't able to win pretty much anything and their defense really couldn't stop anything. Plenty of positions of need there on the defensive end, but they decided to go with the more sexy pick, right? In Ezekiel Elliott running back at Ohio State. Now, I'm okay with the pick. I think that was a interesting pick, but I have no problem with it. Maybe you Cowboys fans can can voice your opinions. But then the, the Jaguars. Now, the Jaguars in the first two rounds absolutely killed it. Now, we talk about the Jaguars. The Jaguars had a very impressive season last year on offense. Now, you saw Blake Bortles take advantage of his weapons and Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns, and they just have weapons there. You know, the offense can carry them throughout the season, but their defense just couldn't stop anybody, right? So they go out, they get the best player available in Jalen Ramsey. Now, good for them, right? That was a oh, great pick by the Jaguars. They're, they were probably just jumping for joy to see that the Cowboys and Chargers passed on them. So, and then you, you, you complement that with Miles Jack. Now, Miles Jack... His, he had an ACL injury, right? And it was, yeah, you want to you wanna be kind of cautious with players, kind of with injuries like that. But Miles Jack is probably the second, behind Jalen Smith, the second best middle linebacker in this entire draft, despite his injury. Miles Jack is NFL ready, but his injury is going to take him a while to come back. Now the Jaguars just added two top playmakers on defense now Jack's like I said is going to take a little bit to come on but he will be able to play this year most likely now in Jalen Smith Jalen Smith's time is probably going to be a while I mean he had that nerve damage but Miles Jack and Jalen Ramsey the Jaguars hit a home run in their first two rounds of this draft and overall they had a pretty solid draft too they focused a lot of their picks on the defensive side so go Jaguars there now the Ravens now here's where it got kind of interesting 
Because Laramie Tunsil, before, 10 minutes before the draft, on his Twitter account, had a video of him, I guess it was two years prior, of him with a gas mask, bong, smoking some pot, and that went viral immediately. It got deleted quickly. But then that was just like, what the hell just happened there? You know, I guess he said that maybe his stepdad posted it for some reason. I don't know, but why would Laramie Tunsil post something like that? Obviously, what I'm saying is he didn't do it. So he must have been hacked in some sort of way. Somebody must have got onto his Twitter and posted that. And then also on Instagram, there were text messages saying that he was, you know, taking money from his Ole Miss coaches. So now he already had off the field issues with some domestic violence stuff. And he already had some character issues, you know, teams that were, were concerned with to begin with. And now 10 minutes before the draft, all of this goes down and he goes and this poor kid, you know, he Larry Tunsil's going into this draft. It's supposed to be the biggest day of his life, you know, and then he he's thrown into this mosh pit of just after he was drafted. He got taken 13th by the Dolphins. A lot of people were saying that he would go one overall to start this draft before the trade went down, and he was still a top five talent, probably the most talented offensive lineman in this draft. But obviously, with the baggage, people were concerned. So he gets taken 13th. They send him to this press conference and. It was like five minutes long, and pretty much the entire thing was about his, one, the video. He's like, oh, you know, what, what, what went down with that? And then also about, they were asking him about the money with his coaches. Now, first he said, oh, no, you know, oh, no, I didn't do, you know, I didn't take any money. And then literally two minutes later, the guy was like, oh, so the text messages that you sent asking about the money, that wasn't you? And then Tunsil was like, yeah, well, yeah, I did take money. Yep, I did. So then... He got rushed off the stage by their PR staff. And, you know, that just, just it's a knock to his uh, former college. And it's just poor kid. I felt bad for him. You know, he's, he's never been in this situation before. This is supposed to be a happy time. But there, that's a mess over there. Larry Tunsil falls to 13. Um, you know, he's, he, I don't know. Dolphins got to deal with that stuff. That was, that was some pretty ugly PR happenings going on during the NFL draft especially for Ole Miss his alma mater so that was that was crazy to begin with and then you have the Bears trading up from 11 to 9 hopping the Giants at 10 now a little bit into this pick we did a show me and Jake Randlich who was an awesome guest we talked about the draft if you want to check that out we talked about the possibility of DeForest Buckner falling to the Bears at 11 now I wanted the Bears so badly to get the Forrest Buckner, but it was it was almost impossible, really. I mean, not totally impossible, but it was a stretch because you had to get past the 49ers, and the 49ers obviously took Buckner, but man, if they decided to go a different route, I don't think the Titans would have picked... Well, then the Titans traded up to the Browns at 8. It, it, it was kind of muddy there because if Buckner fell, right... Do the Browns trade their pick to the Titans? Maybe the Browns take Buckner there. But if the, if Buckner fell those two spots, the Bears jump the Giants. Buckner's theirs, but, you know, eh, whatever. They they instead jump the Giants, who apparently really liked Leonard Floyd, our outside linebacker, and the Bears just snatched him under their noses. So now the Bears get this 6'6", 244, edge-rushing linebacker. And a lot of people are saying, well, I'm going to break that down as the show goes on. But there were the con- general consensus I saw when they took the pick. A lot of people were like, oh, well, I kind of wanted Vernon Hargraves, which I was a big fan of. Oh, I wanted Shaq Lawson, you know, but Leonard Floyd is a bear now. Now let's move on. I'm going to I'm going to get into the, every single pick that the Bears went down. So I'm just bear with me. I'm just still going through this first round because so much stuff happened. It was just nuts. So the Browns finally get some help for their quarterback, whoever's going to be under center, and Corey Coleman, wide receiver. That's good for them. They took four. They took four wide receivers in this draft. So, hey, power to you, Browns. Uh, the Bucks, Yeah, the, the Buccaneers. They, they did something rather interesting, I guess. They traded in the second round. They traded up for a kicker. A kicker in the second round of the NFL draft. Ugh, that's weird. <laughs> I mean, who would I mean yeah this kicker's really good but is he no kicker's worth a second round pick are you serious that was that was weird but uh yeah so the, the Browns let's move on the Broncos the Broncos traded up 
226 with the Seahawks and decided to take Paxton Lynch. Now, this was a quarterback that maybe the Browns were looking at at eight before all this went down, but that, again, is probably a stretch, too, because he's not NFL ready. I mean, he was a running back before he turned into a quarterback. You know, who knows with his skill set how long it's going to take him to develop, but as a Bronco in that system, Gary Kubiak and Elway, that's who you want, you know, running that, uh, turning that quarterback into somebody in that organization. So, power, that's a good pick. I think, by the Broncos, especially since, boy, who do they have a quarterback right now? Osweiler's gone. Is it Mark Sanchez? Good luck there. So an interesting sort of turn of events here in the first round of the NFL draft. Um, and I'm going to go to the second round here because the second round was also kind of interesting, especially with the Bears. Um, also, before I move on, the Vikings. Good pick by the Vikings. Lacan Treadwell. He's going to hurt in the NF- NFC North for a while. I I have a bad feeling about that as a Bears fan. But And th- the Vikings took Mackenzie Alexander, his cornerback, in the second round. Had first-round grades to him. Uh, he's going to be he's gonna be a part of their defensive scheme, too. Maybe not an immediate NFL impact starter, but eventually he's going he's gonna to grow into some kind of lockdown-type defender. So good job, Vikings, there. I'm kind of pissed about it because... Damn it, you know, I want the Bears to just be the best team. But, you know, eh, it happens. So, let's move on. Second round. Bears have a top 10 pick, right? What do they do? They trade down. They trade the Bills and they go down. So, I'm like, all right, well, they must like somebody that they think who is going to fall. Okay, so then they trade down it again. And why did they do that? The stupid Packers go up right in front of the Bears at 17 the Bears sat at 18 in the second round after they traded down, and the Bears took Jason, I'm sorry, the Packers took Jason Spriggs, tackle out of Indiana, 6'6", 301 pounds. This guy is a beast, lots of first-round grades for Spriggs, but the Packers just snatched Spriggs right out from underneath the Bears' noses, and that was an obvious pick for the Bears because they, they were looking offensive tackle. Once Spriggs fell off the board, they were like, well, might as well lock, uh, you know, add some more picks. Now remember, in the first round to trade up to that nine spot with the Bucks, the Bears gave up a fourth round pick that they uh, that they received earlier in whatever this process was. So they had two fourth round picks. They traded one of them, right? Then in the second round, they traded down once. They got a fourth round pick back, and then after Spriggs got taken, they traded down again, and they grabbed another fourth round pick plus a fourth round pick in the future. So next year, so the Bears are loading up on picks. So who do they take in the second round? Cody Whitehair, offensive guard, Kansas State, 6'4", 301 pounds. Now, that was a very solid pick. Very, very good pick. Now, I just now let's let's overall in the in the first two rounds of the draft, it was pretty exciting. I think the winner, definitely one winner was the Jaguars, Jalen Ramsey and Miles Jack. That, those were fantastic picks. I think the Buccaneers did well too. Vernon Hargraves at eleven. But then uh, the kicker in the second round. What are you doing? That's weird. That's just not. I don't. Know. If I ran an organization, I would never ever take a kicker that high ever. I mean, no. So other 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 teams of note. The Bills. I think the Bills did well. Shaq Lawson, right? Shaq Lawson in the first round, defense Ven, impact rusher. Probably going to start right away, especially in that uh, crazy defense over there with with the two uh, Ryan brothers. Running the show there. And then they took Reggie Ragland, linebacker out of Alabama. He was, and you know, the 41st pick in the second round, that was from the Bears. So good for the, that's, a, that's solid. I think the Bills are going to be tough there in the AFC. So, you know, let's just, let's just leave them over there. You know, you don't have to play the Bears in the NFC. 